Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Sharp Shooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brent Sharp, on the ones, the twos, and the threes, and the fours, and the fives, and the six. Thank you for coming back to the podcast, man. We have been growing each and every week. Appreciate everybody's support out there. So make sure y'all keep liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. Uh, we got a few of the guys in the house tonight. Even got a special guest in the house. Well, one of the guys and a special guest, but hey, let me bring them on up. Got my main, main Haven. What's up, player? My down player. We here. We here. We back. Another week. Rock- is that a Rockets jersey? It's actually the Travis Scott edition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's, actually, that's actually hard, dog. Yeah, man. And, my, and last week's guest, who's slowly becoming not a guest no more. Yeah, what's going on, player? What's up, man? What's up, Brother Brinsky? Great to be on. Glad to be on. Appreciate the opportunity, man. Glad to be oh. back. Oh, yeah, man. We got some... Uh, Big things coming up, man. Uh, shout out to everybody out there. Like I said, man, big time supporters. Shout out to my cousin, uh, Jason Walker, for always showing major love, major love. I just want to uh shout him out. He's gonna be on the show real, real soon. A real Tuskegee legend, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, but. We're going to start this show. Y'all already know what went down uh, this past Sunday with the AFC and the NFC championship game. But we're going to start out with the AFC with uh, the Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, It was a real, real tight game, to be honest. And, And a lot, a lot of missed calls in that game. But uh, the Chiefs uh, end up coming out with the uh, W for the most part. And I just want to get y'all thoughts on the game. So, any one of y'all can start. Just give me your thoughts on it. Um, Pretty much, man. Crazy, crazy game. Uh, I think the worst part about the game was the fact that the Baltimore Ravens had 11 rushing attempts. And they were like the number one rushing offense in the NFL this past year. Like Rex Ryan said, uh, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible play calling. Like horrible play calling, man. It didn't, it didn't look like the same team that played the Texans the week before. Them boys running, you know, the more taking off on the and they threw the ball too much. You know what I'm saying? They relied too much on passing. And that's not really their game. So I was, you know, I was baffled that, man, the boys ain't taking in the end zone a lot more, man, on the on the ground. But 11 rushing attempts, man, you're not Kansas City, man. You just can't do that the whole game, man, and expect to win against a, a Chiefs squad like that. So, you know, I was, I was shocked. I was surprised that uh, – they just let the game go like that, man. They didn't run the ball enough at all. So yeah, that's my take on it, man. That's why they lost. They didn't stick to what they knew the whole season. The whole season, man, being number one in rushing. <laughs> when you get to you get here to this point and you barely run the ball. It's just crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. To uh pick it piggyback off of you, um, DJ like. But like I, I was just really flabbergasted and disgusted at Todd Monkins play calling, man. I mean, he, he came from UGA, won us two back to back rings. So he had Lamar, got Lamar MVP this year. The passing game was absolutely phenomenal. This is the best he's ever thrown the ball. Um, you know, they still had to run a game with Gus Edwards, with Justice Hill, with the uh rookie running back they had before he got hurt. 
I mean, they had everything in place. They even went and got Dalvin Cook heck before the doggone playoffs and did not even use him. Dalvin Cook didn't play. Like, I mean, what are you doing, Todd Monkey? You come from Georgia. We're a running team, obviously, when you get there with Zamir White and James Cook. And all of a sudden, you know, the next year you even have uh, Kendall Milton, Kenny McIntosh, and all these things. And so, obviously, Georgia's culture is running. So, bring it to the NFL. Do what you've been doing all year. And you just abandon it against the Kansas City Chiefs because you feel like, oh, Lamar got to keep up with Patrick. So, as much as Patrick throws, Lamar got to throw it. No, 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 no. Stick to your identity and the identity of the Baltimore Ravens ever since. Even You can go back to the Jamal Lewis days. It's running the doggone football. Ray Rice days before he you know got into that trouble all these things they ran the football and that was just abandoned and so i'm like hey man so i'm just i'm, I'm watching lamar even had to catch a pass himself i mean that's how much i was now gonna throw the, the quarterback caught his own pass and so i'm just like because in, in the first half the defense kind of struggled you know keeping the chiefs from kind of getting downfield chiefs pretty much got downfield at will. And so I was like, okay, you know, kind of expected Andy Reid is just a, he's a goat. He's a genius, a legendary play caller. And so, and you got one five, who's also a legend himself. And so that's a little bit expected, but the deep, the offense for the chiefs did not score in the second half. The defense shut the chiefs down. And so I'm like, okay, you know, and, and in the first half, Lamar had that, that passes a flowers that's on the money. Um, and so I'm thinking in the second half, okay, just like they started slowing, you said they're going to they gonna kick it in the gear in the second half. And much of the same thing, bad play calling. You run out with Justice Hill. That's that's uh, that's incomplete. You're not running screens, even though they're blitzing. You're not running any screens. You just, you know, still trying to throw it downfield. Lamar looking downfield. Finally, you get a big play with Zay Flowers. They get it all the way down to the one-yard line. Zay extends the ball out, and he fumbles. I'm like, man, okay, that's a rookie mistake. They get the ball back. Lamar throws a pick into the end zone. I was like, where are you going, Lamar? Why are you throwing in triple coverage? But, again, you're trying to press because you feel like the play calling is just so horrendous. You can't even, you can't do anything because there's no, nothing open. So it's a, you, you got to take off or you got to audible into a run. But I just really disappointed, really disappointed that Todd Monk and above anyone else. And then after that, Zay Flowers. And then after that, Lamar with the, with the pick. But, I mean, you, you, I just – that was disappointing because, like I said, last week I wanted the Ravens to win. I was going for them to win because I like Lamar. But, I mean, they – you know, had some, that was the first AFC championship in their 28-year history. That was the first AFC championship at home. And so I just like – I was just like, man, you know, oh, you know, great season. I mean – we can even arguably say that Ravens have better weapons than the Chiefs. Say Flowers, Mark Andrews played. He was back. Isaiah Likely, Dalvin Cook, Justice Hill, Lamar, uh, um, Odell. Who Odell did not catch a pass until like the third quarter, third, fourth quarter. He finally caught a pass. What like what what are we doing with the play calling? Like like it can't be this bad. And so I know Lamar would say he was mad at himself. He was mad at himself. They were mad at themselves as offense, but I mean, obviously they don't never want to call no coach out, but sometimes you got to call a spade a spade, man. And so it's like, if Todd Monk, hey, you know, you, that, that was that was poor. So, um, you know, Chiefs moved on, but hey, that's just kind of what I thought about it when I saw it. Yeah, my whole thing when I was uh, watching it, just in a lot of ways, what you was pointing out, uh, a lot of the uh, things that you were pointing out with, I'm trying to see which one to uh, start with. I think like the play calling was just atrocious compared to how they usually run things. They uh, usually a running team for the most part. And I, and like you you said it best, how, how do you have Dalvin Cook fresh and you mm. don't use him. And mm. Gus Edwards scoring, I think Gus Edwards scoring like it was over, it was definitely over 10 plus touchdowns, but it was definitely more than that. I could say almost like 15 touchdowns this year. I'm like, man, you have to use those weapons. You clearly mm. just seen the Bills just run all over the Kansas City Chiefs, but you're not using the running game. You're not trying to you use the running game to open up the passing game so mm -hmm. you can at least 
bring one of them safeties down or whatnot. But mm-hmm. hey, man, it it was just terrible play calling. I just don't like how the narrative on Lamar looks because if they score that touchdown, I about to say he has two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Right there. And it's in a lot of ways. And then the interception that uh thrown, I'm not saying that was a good throw because I don't believe it was a good throw. He he didn't uh see the safety right there. But mm-hmm. on the back end, the um and the problem that I kept having when the game was like the officiating, yeah, is clearly if you look at the replay, the man is hugging, he is hugging him to the ground before he even touched the ball, mm-hmm. and they missed that play completely. I didn't notice that during the game. Now I was like mad that he threw it right there because that means he, he didn't see the safety. But I called it like after the game. I'm like, how they did not throw that? And they just were so quick to throw it on the Ravens all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. man, listen here. I love Patrick Mahomes. I love Travis Kelsey. I love Lamar Jackson. I wanted mm-hmm. the Ravens to win because I wanted to see Lamar uh, get one. But mm-hmm. the whole thing, I like, man, call the game fair. Yeah. Like, that's all the thing I always ask. If it ain't my team, I particularly don't care. But I, I just like to see a fair game. And I – in a, in a lot of those moments, it wasn't fair. But at the same time, uh, the Ravens' defense was, I'd say, like the first two or three drives. I don't think they was, like, particularly that good. Mm-hmm. Like, they, was, um, they were moving the ball on them. But I, right after that, they were, they were playing, like, lights out. Mm-hmm. So the Ravens should have capitalized on a lot of those uh, – Turnovers on down, uh, punts and all that. They should have definitely capitalized on that. So it ain't like they just fully off the hook. Mm-hmm. But you got to you gotta give that to the offense coordinator. So, but, mm-hmm. hey, man, we just getting ready for the uh, Super Bowl for those guys. Mm-hmm. But anybody else got anything on this one before I move to the NFC? I'm done with that one, man. That was, yeah. yeah. So disappointed. Yeah, I'm about to say, man, I think it was just like a culture thing just for like just see Lamar uh, get it this year. But shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now we got to deal with another uh, – in two weeks we got to deal with another week of Taylor Swift and the NFL cameras just showing her like a thousand times. Like we don't know she's at the game, of course – Thank you. We know she's at the game. Can you stop showing her? We don't care. But of course, we already know it's, it's a money. It's a money thing. It's, mm-hmm. That's all what it's always about. But we're gonna talk about it. Talk about some about money yeah. in these uh, leagues in a minute. But NFC Championship game. Now this one right here. I thought it was gonna be a very very interesting game. Now this one, I was just like. You know what? I think the Lions can really do this, man. I really believe that they can because one thing they're going to do is run the ball. And they got <laughs> is a uh thunder and lightning type thing that they uh duo that they got with David Montgomery and uh Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs. Then you got Jared Jared Goff who's been playing. Uh, I, I don't know why people didn't like Jared Goff. I'm like, Jared Goff is, is a good quarterback mm-hmm. and whatnot. And he's showing, and you actually got him weapons out there. Well, he had weapons in L.A. But I just feel like you got once you got somebody that believe in you, man, you you will play a lot better. And with Dan Campbell playing, uh, believing in him. But Omara St. Brown, and you got J-Mo. Shout out to J-Mo. Roll Tide. And um, I would say Reynolds, man, but Reynolds just pissed me off before we got on the show when he was saying a quote about the game. And then I'm going to let y'all just talk about the game or whatever. When they asked him about, like, how does it feel? I guess he said something. They asked him about the uh, the two crucial drops that he had that they threw to him on crucial downs, and he was just like, shit happens. Mm. That's it? Mm. If I was a Lions fan, I will be heated by that statement. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 just say it like that. 
Mm-hmm. Just, just, that's just my that's my only thing. Just don't say it like that. Just say like, "Hey, man, I, I, next time I gotta go catch it or something." Mm-hmm. Don't just say shit at me like, "Man, I would have been like, hey, get 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 rid of him immediately." Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on the game? Man, oh man, oh man. I I literally, you know. When you had players in the first quarter waving off, like this is game over. Then they came out blowing the boys out the water, man. I mean, it was it was insane. Like in my head, I thought the game was over, bro. Going into the third, going out, coming out the halftime, I just knew the game was over. <laughs> like there was nothing else that had to be done. Just play defense, run that clock down. Go to the Super Bowl. These boys flopped so hard in the third quarter. It was the most insane thing I've seen since Atlanta lost to uh, the Patriots in the Super Bowl. It was insane, man. I mean, to be up 20, what was it, 27 to 7? Yeah, 24 to 7. 24 to 7. 24 to 7. These boys was up that much and still lost the game, bro. They got too cocky. I don't know what Dan Campbell told them in the locker room. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the NFL gods made a phone call and, and broke it all up, up bust them out the water, told them, hey, man, I got to chill. I don't know what happened. But, man, oh, man, to see that team flop as bad as they did, and I know that that hurt. Them Detroit fans so bad, man. It, it was so many people riding on this game to see Detroit go to the Super Bowl. And for them boys to go out like that, man, was just – if I was a Detroit fan, I would be – I would be utterly heartbroken, bro. I would be so upset because they just let it go and then waited too long to try to come back. You know what I'm saying? Then the whole going forward on fourth down when you could have kicked the ball, punted it off. You got four minutes left in the game almost. Punt the ball. They went for it on what, fourth and two? Something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Punt the ball. You, 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 you go for it, and then you give them perfect field position. Mm-hmm. Just dumb decisions, dumb decisions. They just – it's like they went in that locker room and, and, and they were smoking something, man. But when they mm-hmm. came back out, they they celebrated too early, man. In my opinion, I feel like they celebrated too early, I way too cocky. They ran mm-hmm. a, they ran the score too early and really let the, the 49ers come back, man. And, and it was insane, bro. It, it was that's all I got to say. But it was just a big one of the biggest flops I've seen in playoff history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. It, it it was really sad, bro. Like like when I was watching the when I was watching the game. Of course, Detroit scored first seven nothing, and so I was like, okay, it might be a little back and forth then. But then fourteen nothing, and then they just kept increasing the scores twenty four to seven at halftime. I was like, wow, Detroit. I remember y'all talking about y'all got Detroit in that game from, mm-hmm. from, from last week. I was like, dang, they right, bro. Because I chose the 49ers. I think oh, they at home, just defense. Uh, if Debo Samuel plays a rap, like I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, 49ers, I'm just going to glide through this thing. But Detroit was like, not so fast. And so I'm like, okay. I was literally 24 to 7. I was like, oh, yeah, they gave over. Let me go uh, start up 2K, you know. Detroit going to the Super Bowl. It's going to be like the first, very first game of the season was the Chiefs versus the Lions. And it's probably going to be a good Super Bowl. And, you know, Detroit Detroit fans in Detroit are absolutely going to be ecstatic. If they win, it's going to be a parade. It's going to be like amazing because Michigan already won the national championship. So if Detroit won the Super Bowl, Michigan will absolutely be crazy, be insane football-wise. You can walk nowhere without seeing some type of paraphernalia Detroit Lion or Michigan Wolverine. And so it's like, it's like, it was like, wow. But um, I mean, I definitely blame the majority of the Detroit's uh, failure to win the game on Dan Campbell, who can officially be called Dan Gamble now. 
I'm talking about this guy is a gambler. Like, I remember watching a Facebook reel a few games ago in the regular season. They played the Rams, uh, and they uh, they needed a first down just to pretty much ice the game. And instead of kicking the field goal to where the team would have had a chance to drive down the field to, uh, you know, tie it up, he was like, no, let's go for it. And so we, we can just take a knee and get on and uh, take a knee and win the game. And they went for it. They got it. And that was it. And, and the person I was commentating was like, oh, Dan Campbell has guts. He has guts. Guts so steel, all that. And it's like, okay, that's cute for the regular season. But he get in a postseason situation, you on the road, my brother, you're going to need to take them points. Because if you don't, it can cost your, your city, your franchise, uh, your team, the chance of playing the Super Bowl. It is hard to make it to a Super Bowl in the NFL. Like, it is very difficult. And so – I mean, you, you up 20 – at that time, I think it was 24 to, 24 to 14. And he said, you know what, let's go for it. Didn't get it. It would have been 27 to 14, you know, different ball game. You only lost by three points. So at least the game would be tied in that situation. Went for it again late, later on in the game when they were up uh, by, I believe, three or seven. And didn't get it. Uh, kick a field goal there. You possibly win the game. And so it's just like, Dan, like you have to realize the time and place. This is the playoffs. This is not the regular season. Yeah, Detroit has not been has not been this far since 1991. 91, man. And so it's like you have to be smart. It's a good yeah. Sometimes you gamble, sometimes you need to be brave, sometimes you need to be courageous as a coach, but that was not the time. Um, and definitely remind me of like DJ was saying, definitely reminded me of the of my team, the Falcons in the Super Bowl. Like, we all we have to do is run the ball and you win the game. I mean, just that simple. You run the ball, who you catch the ball, 22 yard line. You run the ball two, three times, kick the field goal, that's ball game. It doesn't, Tom Brady can drive all the way downfield in 30 seconds. We'll still get the ball back, take a couple of knees, and win the game. I mean, you, it's, 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 it's smart. It's common sense. Common sense says, let's just kick the field goal. Like, this is not the time to gamble. Dan Campbell, this ain't the time. You played for Detroit. I mean, you know the the clownish stuff that has gone on over the last 30 years with that franchise. And so you got to get that franchise over that. Y'all, look, I don't think the Detroit Lions have ever been to a Super Bowl. And so I just, you know, I feel for the fans. Um, you know, definitely shout out Brock Purdy. I mean, he showed some athleticism that people did not know he had and that I knew he had, to, but he just don't show it like that. Uh, Debo Samuel played and made a difference. Brandon Ayuk is extremely underrated and he had a, he had a great game. Um, George Kittle is always going to do his thing. Chris McCaffrey always going to do his thing. And the defense rolls up to the occasion when it counted late, when it really mattered late. <clears throat> so, and this was the second game in a row because they should have lost the Packers game. It, it came back, then Detroit came back. So, the, um, shout out, you know, Kyle, you know, even though I like him because of what he did to my Falcons, Kyle Shanahan. Um, you know, he's always gonna have that play call and roll with and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, but yeah, so I, 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 if I'm, if I'm the GM or if I'm a, um, if I'm, if I'm the owner of the Detroit Lions, I'm going to talk to Dan Campbell and be like, hey, man. For now on, if you understand our staff in these situations, you got to be cons- more conservative. Just kick the field goal because we 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 we're desperate. The, the Detroit Lions fan base is desperate for a championship, They've, especially when you've never been. I can at least say my Falcons have been twice, but when you've never been, like that's you know that's that's a problem. So I mean, I I, I was you know I wasn't. I'm always I, I knew the I I chose the 49ers to win. But I'm always an underdog guy. Whoever the underdog is, I want them to win. So it was like when Detroit winning, I was like, okay, okay. And then you know they just they just they just let it up because of D- Dan Quinn. I mean Dan Campbell. Yeah. So for the most part, man. Uh, yeah, Dan uh, took gambles where he didn't even have to take gambles. It to be honest, the first one I can get okay, maybe. But that second one, I was just like. Mm. If you're gonna at least take the game, at least go to your best player, mm-hmm. or uh, Omara St. Brown. At least you can depend on him to catch it. Both times he went to Rick Reynolds, and both times he dropped the ball. Mm-hmm. I think it was both times he went to Reynolds on that uh, four down. I can't remember or whatever. 
No, nah, I think he under through he under through uh Amon Ross St. Um, Brown the second time. But but on the third down, he uh under um Reynolds dropped it. Mm-hmm. And yep. one of them on fourth down, he dropped the other one he dropped on third down. But yeah, man, it they let that one go. They should be in the Super Bowl. And the whole thing is, man, I, I never I never say a game is over until it gets like two minutes until it's like two minutes uh, in the game or whatnot, because I've seen too much football and I've seen crazy things happen, mm-hmm. and especially with that uh, Falcons and Patriots Super Bowl, which was <laughs> one of the best Super Bowls I ever watched, maybe the best Super Bowl I ever watched, and I'm glad I watched it. Never miss one second of that game and just to see the comeback i definitely would cherish that forever so but shout out to the 49ers man they did their thing brock purdy is definitely proving a lot of people wrong about this game manager and uh game changer and i'm like hey man he stayed poised when that and when they needed points he got them points shout out to brandon iu Showing he's a good playmaker, and we got ourselves a big time Super Bowl coming up. They're gonna hype this up. Uh, I think this, yeah, this Christian McCaffrey's first one. So what helps the 49ers in this one? Uh, I ain't gonna even speak on it too much. <clears throat> is their running game and with Christian McCaffrey, they're going to run the ball. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if Christian McCaffrey get. Uh, one, two, one, five, one, no matter how many, they're going to run the ball with Chris McCaffrey. But we're going to talk about that next week with the Super Bowl predictions and all that. But let's get ready for that Super Bowl and some Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely going to be jamming to that. A little a quick. Cool Oh, yeah, it, that, that halftime show going to be fine. MLB The Show 2024. We, it's just been announced today that Vladimir Guerrero is going to be on the cover. I just wanted to uh, just speak on it real quick. Uh, you guys can give y'all uh, quick thoughts on it, too. But the only thing, I don't care who's on the cover. I don't care what year it is. Only thing I want MLB to show 2024 to fix is literally one thing. Now, I ain't gonna lie that um, the Negro League feature last year, top tier. Learned a lot uh, about players I didn't even know about, and even learned some a little bit more about players I did know about. So, whenever I actually do go to Kansas City, Missouri, which I think the Negro League's Hall of Fame is in, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm going to definitely check it out. So, And I recommend everybody else go check it out. But they definitely need to fix um, Road to the Show. Because I just, it's just like the same locker room. It's like nothing new. It, it felt like I was playing the game from the year before with just new. Um, it Nothing really changed on it. Only thing that would change was like a couple of voiceovers. But that's about it. And I need to see, like, new things on it. Like, I ain't say it got to be turned into, like, 2K, where it's almost looking like The Sims now. But they just have more features to it. That's really it. What's y'all thoughts on it? Um, I've, I've been playing MLB The Show for a while now, man. I think the first one I picked up was uh, on a PSP. It was like... I want to say 10 or something like that. And then for years, Xbox didn't have MLB show at all. So you, you pretty much have a PlayStation or something to play. But, uh, you know, I can kind of agree with you on that, man. Like, they haven't changed much in Road to the Show. Um, honestly, I think it's gotten a little worse <laughs> than the uh, previous years. Uh the Negro League feature was dope. I hope it comes back this year. They should keep that in the game. But you know how these how these studios are. They bring something in. They take something out every year. Uh, cover athlete. 
hey, whatever, you know, I want to see one of my boys on there, you know. We could have had, you know, Al Tule, Grace to cover, but it's all good, you know. Uh, or Eric Jordan, you know what I'm saying? And my boy Jordan Alvarez on the cover, but you know, it's all love. It's good to see, you know, another brother on the cover. So uh, we'll see how this game plays out, man. Uh, I haven't seen anything new about any new features they implemented. And so unfortunately, we may be dealing with another year of uh, the same old thing. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to still pick up the game and try it out, see what's going on with it. But uh, I think the last time I had some real, real fun on there was the 21. I didn't like 22. Uh, 22 is <clears throat> pretty straight, but hopefully, man, hopefully they just revamp some things on this new game. So we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. Yeah. Yeah, man. I agree with you, DJ. Like, I – um. I um so I I, I had mo- mainly Xbox for about ten years. I got I got a PS5 last year, but they did have the show on Xbox in its latter years. Um, uh, the Xbox One, but uh, like yeah, just little change. Like every every the last last especially two years, it's like there's barely any type of upgrade as far as gameplay i don't play road to the show like that more so do like quick games online and stuff like that but um it's just little to no uh little to no change like the the, the pitching the, the pitching mechanics hold this hold that the the batting what well, i can't stand it it's something they really need to change like to me even more than what brinsky was saying with the uh road to the show dynamics is the hitting when it comes to foul balls. Like, a ball can be pitched right down the middle. I time it up just right, and they'll go foul straight back. I'm like, bro, come on, bro. I need this hit right here because I'm trying to extend the game or I'm trying to get this big hit. The bases are loaded, and I'm down by a run, and it's the ninth inning. Like, stop making Ronald Acuna foul it to the right, foul it to the left, off his foot back. Like, bro, I'm timing this thing up perfectly. That's that's the main thing that pissed me off. And so if they can if they can correct that, I mean, I would, you know, it would be more feasible and, you know, I would enjoy playing it more. But, I mean, they they, 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 they got some work to do. And of course, I'm biased. I'm an Atlanta Brave fan. I hate they ain't put Ronald on there. Um, I like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I like his dad. But, um, you know, Ronald won MVP, had a historic year, like 70 stolen bases, 40 home runs. I mean, batted over 300. I mean, the guy, this was amazing, an amazing year. Um, and so, because I think he's really getting to full, full health ever since the ACL tear in 21. And so, I, uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward, you know, to playing this year's, um, you know, when it does come out. But, you know, I really hope they made those changes. Yeah, man. I'm just going to add this uh, final thought before we move on. Um, I, you just said, man, I just lost my train of thought just that quick. But uh, I'm trying to remember, was it? Uh, and also with like the pre- uh, presentation, can we get like more presentation to it? Just like, I don't know, man. It, it can be more to it. It just feels like 2010-ish. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, you, mm-hmm. yeah. like add more to the game. Make it feel like it's the real deal. Give me like more. <laughs> they they got to give me more. But once they uh had a... Uh, Feature premieres and all that. They already set the dates and stuff. Mm-hmm. I better see a lot of change because last year I didn't buy the game. It just so happened to be on Game Pass. That was the only <laughs> reason why I, mean, I didn't try to rush to the store to get it. And I did mm-hmm. the same thing with 2K because I didn't see nothing special for me to get it. So I skipped a year of 2K. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to see what they talking about. This one definitely is a quick uh, topic. But just want to uh, shout out to the main man on YouTube, Mr. Destroying to the UFL. I think it's the U. Uh, I U-F-L. think it's no. I think it's UF USF USFL. Uh-huh. Nah, I thought they swapped it to UFL. I thought it was because it was USFL, and then they did, they made the merger. Now it's the UFL. They they they've been doing the um, merger, like I don't know, but it's definitely the UFL. 
well, whatever. <laughs> at, at this point, but uh, yeah, it's it's the UFL because he put he put UFL. But uh, shout out to him just uh getting a chance to do uh what he loves to do because he's a kicker, but he's a uh, definitely a damn good athlete and has some good content on his uh show. Well, on his uh YouTube channel. So shout out to him, big fan. I think. Uh, all of us are big fans. I'm not sure if Josh know who he is. Oh, uh, I've but heard you, of him. You, you more, more than likely you've seen him before, but do a lot of good one on one videos or whatnot. But shout out to Destroy. I just want to say that, yeah, man. Oscar De La, hey man, big shout outs to him. Uh, finally getting this chance to go pro, uh, outside of I think he's I think he's played in like uh. So smaller leagues before, uh, but man, it's, it's it's just a good thing for the league, man. It's gonna definitely bring some viewership uh, to the UFL this season. That's a big, big signing. He has a big, big uh, social media following, a big YouTube subscriber following, all that. You know, uh, everything this man touches goes crazy on the internet. So this is gonna be a really good signing, really good pickup for the UFL. I wanna see more guys like like him uh coming to this league, uh that people wanna see play. Like uh I feel like a lot of people didn't want to wanna see him in the NFL, get his get shot in the NFL. And this may actually be the first big step to that, seeing him play in the UFL and if he uh comes out and does what he needs to do, win some games, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kick some game winners or something like that. Somebody give them a shot in the NFL. But uh, it's a really good pickup, man. I want to see more more signings like this in the UFL in the near future. Hopefully, they bring my boy Johnny Manziel back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Time, Before we move on. <laughs> hey, man, we'll see, man. I would have said uh, Cam, but Cam talking about playing for the Falcons, and I was like, Cam, come on. He said, I ain't playing for nobody unless it's the Falcons. I was like, well, have retirement, my brother. That'd be messing these men up, man. That'd be messing these guys up, man. Like, <clears throat> so hard being on going back to the NFL or staying in the NFL and don't want to, you know, what Cam would do to the UFL would be crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, and that's, that's he, my whole if thing. If he tear it up there, that, that, that will see, like, how his foot is – it, it made too much sense. Common sense ain't common, man. We know that. Yeah, already. But Cam, but that's what I'm saying. But he doing the damn thing in Atlanta, man. He, <laughs> like he's doing the damn thing. And plus, he's Cam Newton. So, but if he yeah. just done, trust me, he ain't gonna be hurting for no money. I can promise you that. Nah, 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 not at all. What's your quick? Well, cool for the well, Josh don't know too much about him, so. Yeah, but I was gonna say if he if he's like that guy, the uh, Dallas Cowboys kicker that was making those sixty yarders, if he's like that, then yeah, I I, I can't say what he is as a kicker. I know he can. Um, he was a kicker in college, but he lost like his scholarship because he didn't want to give up uh, his YouTube channel to like mm-hmm. stay on the football team. This is way before like NIL. Now he'll be killing me in NIL if he mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about then. It it would it wasn't that the channel wouldn't be because his channel. I don't think his channel was that big then. It was big, but it wasn't that big. Not like how it is now. But it it's guy's time, man. So I'm just happy he at least get to uh, continue doing what he's doing. But shout out to Destroy. He was on a horrible UCF team that went defeated. Uh. <laughs> Historically he bad said, UCF team. Wow. Wow. Hold on, what you talking about? He played on that historically bad UCF team, I think from 2017. I can't remember the year I'm trying to get up, but it was it was a team that pretty much went defeated the whole season. It's like historically I mem- bad uni- I remember I remember, I remember them going undefeated. I don't remember them going like they didn't win nothing. Yeah, oh, I, right. I know something. Yeah, it was it was like a year before they went undefeated. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, they I had a really bad team that year. I, I wasn't paying. I, I never paid attention to UCF like that. Anyway, <laughs> I was zero twelve that season. 
Oh, hey man, we're looking at you. You give an insight, I ain't even uh new. So he's, he's hey, actually shit. spoke about that. He's actually talked about that on his on his show. They went defeated. Hmm. <laughs> <Defeated. 12. laughs> Couldn't even, even buy a win. Did you at least pinch the bitch? Did you at least pinch? The... <laughs> Boy. Terrible. Money and rings. I don't. And you know what? I don't even want to start there. We'll go to that next. The rise of the NBA scoring. Now, with this topic, like I say in the past week, man, we've been seeing like some crazy scoring. Folks just scoring 60 like it's like the new 40 or whatnot. And 70 like it's the new 50 or whatnot. And the thing, like, it's dope to see. But I remember talking to Arlon about this, dog. The NBA that I know now is not the NBA I grew up loving. I'm like, man, trust me. Folk, yeah, folks want to see scoring, but it's only – I don't know. We love to see defense, too. Like <laughs> A block is exciting, too. Oh, what not, man? Somebody getting locked up when I like, ooh, he can't go no way, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. But of course, I know scoring gonna always be king. But man, folks are scoring like 135 on average now. And it's just mm-hmm. like running good. And, and the problem that I have with it is that a lot of these guys are, they would say they better like an all time great seat. Like Isaiah Thomas and then one doing nothing like that. Like, bro, each and every day, when I see scoring like this, guys like Ron Artest, Trace McGrady, Kobe Bryant, I'm talking about like all time great type players. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head Pat Ewing, Charles uh-huh. Barkley, all them folks. And they asked them, like, what do you think Michael Jordan would do in his day and time? He'll probably average like 40 or 50. Mm-hmm. And the reason why a lot of folks uh try to uh, question is because they try to like to have that uh Michael Jordan and LeBron debate. But you can see, like, bro, you're not touching them. And this man was already scoring, averaging like mid-30s. So imagine if you can't touch him went to the rim. And he loves the game of basketball and he ain't playing 82 games. Like Michael Jordan probably would seriously average this for real, dog. Mm-hmm. It is insane. And he wasn't shooting threes like that. Mm-hmm. Man, I I, I love to, uh and then I'm gonna let y'all have it before we uh, move on because I ain't want to stay on this topic too long either. But what are y'all guys' thoughts on just, like, the whole thing? Because I personally don't like it, and I believe Adam Silver. I thought Adam Silver was, like, a good person to follow David Stern, but I'm starting to have a lot of questions about that because David Stern had the NBA like a well or machine. He did. It, sure. it was like no flaw to this. The only thing I can probably think of, and that's just like picky, is the uh dress code thing. Yeah. That was about it. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, man, like this is crazy, dog. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on it? Either one of y'all. You can go first, Josh. Okay. Yeah, man. So like I'm a I'm a defensive guy. Uh and any sport that I play, coach, you know, obviously mainly coaching now with uh, football and baseball, but even I coach basketball, you know what I'm saying, a little bit in college. But anything that I play, coach, 2K, in real life, whatever it is, I'm big on defense. And if my team is not defending, you know what I'm saying, like if, in football, the Falcons ain't defending, if Georgia ain't defending like they should, if the Braves aren't, aren't fielding those ground balls and fly balls like they should, I'm ticked off because it's like that saying never gets old defense wins championships 
Like for real, for real. I be I even believe in basket and basketball somewhat. Defense won the championship all them years. The Warriors was winning the championship, you know, from 2014 up until Katie left in 2019. They were ranked top defensively. Yo, they shoot three, this and that. Yeah, they were shooting threes, of course, but they played defense. Steve Kerr played for Chicago Bulls and the San Antonio Spurs defensive team. They brought that same philosophy to Golden State. And that's what resulted in that resulted in them being um one of the top defensive teams in the league in the league for all them years. And even when they won a championship in 22, you know, they were at one time Steph was one of the top defenders in the league statistically in 2021, 2022. And their defense was top 10 in the in, 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 um, NBA. And so it's like, yes, players nowadays are very highly skilled. They can shoot at a with a at a high arc. Um, they can score at a high arc. They can, you know, you got you got players like Joel and B, you know, can lethal from the mid range and can shoot the three ball and can still drive on you and can still post up on you. All those things. Anthony Davis is very skilled as a big man. Um, you know, Giannis just can, you know, power through you in the paint. Um, and so you have, you know, Jokic is just on. We've never seen a center like him who can average a triple double. 20, 25 point triple double. And so it's like we have this elite scoring, these elite, these elite skill sets in the NBA nowadays, but that's still no excuse to not get your tail down and sit in a chair on defense and lock somebody up on the perimeter, have your hands out, be fundamental, slide your feet left and right. Cause I mean, it's just some of it, man, I attribute to just laziness. Like, Folks like, oh, bump the defense. I'm just going to go score. Like, no, bro. Like, Michael Jordan is me regarded as the GOAT because he not only could score elitely offensively, but he was a hound on defense. Nine, ten-time first-team all defense. Kobe Bryant, yes, could score with the best of them. Hound on defense. Will lock Dwayne Wade up when he needed to. Will lock Ray Allen up. Will lock Paul Pierce up when he needed to. All the all the all those things we'll lock all these players up because he was he didn't play about defense, man. And so it's like it's this it's quote unquote fun to watch and more entertaining, but it's like you you're losing the genuineness and the authenticity of the NBA because it's like you know y- yes you have offense, but you have you have to play you you got to play defense because the the goal in, in, in all sports is not just to score but it's to defend your your defend your basket and defend your area and so it's like seeing the Lakers game on Saturday night final score one forty six to one forty five it's like bro and yes yes two overtimes but where's the defense like the Lakers when they won the NCAA season tournament they were dn up something happened and they just have abandoned defense. Um, and so it's like, wh- why does why does the why you know wh- why is it happening again? I think some of it's some of it's laziness. Some of it's just oh, we need to appeal more to the audience, and audiences like more scoring. They don't like defenses. I mean, no hard nosed games back in the days, like when the Lakers used to play the Celtics. Final score eighty eight to eighty six. Like oh, that's not fun to watch. But it's like it's also not fun to watch no defense. Like scoring here, scoring there. Like, 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 let's like, come on, man. Let's just get back to the fundamentals because we got the size, we got the click capellas. You know, what I'm saying we got the DeAndre Jordan still in the league, who was a multiple time All Defender in the league. You know, what I'm saying Michael Porter Jr. You got, uh, you got, you know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. They play defense. LeBron still play defense. Eighty. So you got the people that can play it. It's like just do it. You know, what I'm saying just do it, and that'll make these games even that more exciting. And not just, oh, I'm finna see a 150 to 145 point game. It's like, where where is again, where's the authenticity and where is just the fundamentals of the sport? Because that's one of the first fundamentals you talk when you when you play basketball and rec league when you were a child. Coach would say, hold your hands up, slide your feet. You do slide drills all, all around the court and all that kind of stuff, man. So I it is it, it's, it's disappointing. In some ways it's exciting. But in a lot in a lot of ways, man, just flat out disappointed. And I hope the NBA um can can even um the the commissioner right now, Adam Adam Silver. I hope he can somehow get into these owners' head and these coaches' heads. Like, hey, y'all need to draft some more defenders so we can just get to, you know, normal basketball, you know, the normalcy of it. Cause I don't want this to become the new normal. 
because it's just like, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm just going to see offense, 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 and no defense. And so, yeah. What's your thought, Dave? Man, uh, the game has definitely gotten, gotten more exciting, in my opinion, as far as offensively. Like, it's just funner to watch, I guess, because – there's more points being scored. There's more cooler things happening on the court at the expense of the defense, which is terrible. Uh, it's not as competitive. I think these players have gotten weaker than uh, from the generations that we watch. Um, it's just starting to become like globetrotter ball, bro. Like these guys are like the Harlem globetrotters. They're coming out there just doing what they want to do, throwing whatever up. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's d up. Nobody's, you know. Gone are the days of the Dennis Rodmans where he'll come in and, and have 48 rebounds and zero points, just play some defense. You know, it you know, the, the brand of football has changed a lot over the past 10 years, uh, for sure. Uh it's a way different brand of basketball than we're used to. Um and I really do blame uh it's hard to it's hard to really even pinpoint who to blame at this point. Because, uh, like I said, I think these players have gotten weaker, man. I think everybody wants to play offense. You got Victor Wimbayamas coming in, six, uh, seven foot six players and stuff, seven foot five players that can uh, dribble and cross over and, and, and shoot fadeaways and do all this stuff, but they ain't even really playing no defense. Like, if you if you guys watch that Chet Holmgren, Wimbayama uh, back and forth the other week, San Antonio was down, I want to say, at least 20, 30 points. And then it just became a Wimbayama, Chet Holmgren show. Like, it was like, okay, we're going to let these two players just show what they can do. You know, two of our our biggest, tallest, lanky centers that that have skills. We just don't, like, show out. You know what I mean? San Antonio didn't care about playing defense. They didn't care about anything but giving Wimbayama the ball, you know. And – uh. Yeah, the highlights were exciting, but look at the score. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, are we not caring about the scores anymore? It's just it's, it's crazy. Like you guys are saying, we're, we're seeing things we've never seen in basketball before, which is 150 points being scored in a game, even in double overtime. That's still crazy. Uh, I remember, man, just seeing a 100-point game was exciting back in the day. Mm-hmm. Wow, sh- we get a 100-point game every – Every almost every day, mm-hmm. somebody's scoring 100 points, you know what I'm saying? So it's just crazy, man. Nobody's playing defense like they used to play. And like you, you brought up Golden State, uh, even those guys they're getting older now. Uh, their, their skill at, at defense isn't what it used to be. So, uh, you know, man, it's, it's very unfortunate, man. This is where we're at in basketball. I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a 200-point game one day. You know what I'm saying? The way that these guys are playing no type of defense out there. They're playing globe trotter ball. And that's mm-hmm. all I got to say on this one. And the thing that – you what you said about the 100-point uh, game, like, yeah. Like, man, it, it's cool. Like, we can score 100, even 110, maybe even sometimes 120. But when you see consistently a bunch of games that are like 135, 130, like, bro, what is anybody playing any defense? Like, no, like they will say holding a team to 100 points or 110 points is good defense. I'm like, in what world, bro? I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't like where the league is going, I didn't. I haven't been liking it for a long time, especially with these soft ass refs oh, calling man. these calling oh, texts. I don't know if y'all seen that Matt Struess text the uh, other night. Man, he literally they called foul. He had the ball in his hand. Only thing he did was just pass the ball to the ref. And I guess she didn't like it the way he passed it to her and gave him passed it to him. How he passed it to her and she gave him a tick. I said, "Boy, here we mm-hmm. go." Mm-hmm. Like the, the refs are soft, man. I'm the refs <laughs> back in the day, man. They <laughs> damn near cussing you out too. Yeah, real. Like, real. come on, man. We 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 
we gotta do better. Man. I'm, so, I'm like, man, I, I love this game too much. Man. I go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, Brisky. Like another issue that I think is resounding that the NBA needs to kind of maybe even look into is the size of some of these players, man. Because when Mayana dog is a dog, he's skinny. Uh Chet Holmgren, dog, but skinny. Even Jokic, like, I mean, he, he just kind of just rumbled down the court. It's like, guys, y'all need to get in shape. Shaq would absolutely annihilate, annihilate a lot of these uh, centers, man, because they are skinny, bro. Chris Tapps, Porzingis, like, I mean, and so the skinnier you are, think about Trey Young and Steph Curry, the skinnier you are, the lighter you are, the less size you have. Now, yeah, you got to shoot the three because if you go inside, you're going to get knocked down. Like if Trey Young would have played in the 90s with Jordan, Steph would have played in the 90s with Jordan, like even Damian Lillard, they, boy, they, they would have retired after five years, man, because they I, I, I just can't go that handle this academy. I wouldn't go that far to say that they would retire. Yeah, but they they uh, wouldn't have been able to handle the physicality, man. I don't know about that. Dame Dame ain't no skinny dude. Well, Dame, yeah, Dame's not skinny. And then but Steph can handle that too, man. I don't think so. I think maybe Trey, maybe, but I wouldn't say Trey gonna retire in like five years or whatnot. Yeah, yeah but man. yeah, it's it's a lot of things that Adam Silver needs to uh, fix, man. The whole league is just. Just I just don't like the way it is right now, and it's it just like pissing me off every single time I like watch a game, and I'm just like, bro, it is some terrible basketball. Yeah. Reason what? And I'm gonna say the one last thing. We're gonna move on. When Pop was saying something, because I've been saying this, like, bro, it's a lot of players that are not fundamental, fund, fundamentally sound, mm-hmm. and when Pop said something about that. I said, there you go right there. Because mm-hmm. you can just watch the game. And I'm like, bro, a lot of these dudes would get killed. <laughs> and uh, I'd say around like Kobe, Nim era, because a lot mm-hmm. of those guys are fundamentally sound. And I don't know, man. It, it's just a lot of things. I hate the end season tournament. I thought it was stupid, and I still think it's stupid. And I don't know why folks think it just brought attention to the uh, NBA. The NBA is the NBA. It's not going nowhere. (laughs) That's why I said David Stern is rolling over in his grave just looking Mm -hmm. at this product. I can promise you if David Stern, the innovator that made the NBA what it is today, would be like, why is there an in-season tournament right here when we had the NBA Finals? This is a laughing matter. Why are we hanging up a banner in Staples Center for the Lakers? This doesn't make any sense to me. Why are we – like the idea for the All-Star game was cool at one point. Like, yo, you get to pick, pick your players and stuff like that. But that got old. They going back yeah. to the old format. No or no, sure mm-hmm. I'm like, it's so much. Yeah, it definitely needs to go back to East versus West. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm LeBron Giannis team. Yeah, and then and then you got like oh uh, you got a scoring margin right there. I like mm-hmm. I like how you have like uh have put more on the line for it, but shit, it, it's just whack, bro. It just it's just whack. But money or rings. So we was talking about this. This is like. Another brother up top. We already had a conversation about this before, but uh, Mr. Josh wanted to talk about it, which I had zero problem talking about because I felt like it's a good topic to talk about. But mm-hmm. give, I remember Gilbert Arenas talking about um, having his money. I remember, I, well, I just put it like this I remember asking the guys, who would you rather be? Would you rather have James Harden career and money, or would you have Robert Orr's career and money? Mm-hmm. And I think it was half and half. I can't remember who said it. Take James Harden. I said I'll take James Harden. I can give a damn about them rings or whatnot. Because James Harden just signing 
you talking about three year deals, 175 million? I don't know. I'm just throwing out a number like that. Like, bro, you will be foolish. You will be foolish if you take a ring over money any day. I'm like, when you got the money, yeah, it's cool to say, yeah, I got my uh, 40 million a year. Now I want this ring. I still want a ring, but I also want that money too. Because mm-hmm. guess what? I can't play basketball forever. Mm-hmm. And I, it's it's just like the nonsense. I wish a lot of those guys would get out this mindset like, oh, I'm going to take a, a home t- hometown uh, discount. I wish I had a son. And he had the all, if God willing, he had the ability to make it to any pro sport, especially baseball. And he'd be like, and if he played for the Braves, he'd be like, you know what, Dad? I'm going to get a Braves a hometown discount. <laughs> and I wish I was the last person he talked to before he go make that deal. Mm. I say, are you out of your MF mind? <laughs> Because ain't no way, bro. They trying, like, you can literally sign one of these Shohei Otani deals or you can sign, which is still, it's looking worse that he even signed the deal now. I thought it was terrible when he signed the deal now. Ronald Acuna, when he signed that deal early, as long as he did for just a hundred and some million dollars, I was like, bro, you were going to get way, way more than that. Why did you sign that? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it's still a good thing. But what are y'all thoughts on money, money or rings? What you doing? Yeah, man. I um, I, th- I think the the goal, obviously, with any athlete that comes into their profession, is to accumulate as much of both as they can. Um, well, hold on. Let me let me let me let me get this. One part out. My fault. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're good, you're and I ain't saying like rings ain't important to your legacy or whatnot. Yes, you should be out there trying to get a ring too. But guess what? Secure the bag, my friend. Mm-hmm. Secure the bag. I just want to make that very, very clear. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. My fault. No, you're good. Yeah, man. So obviously, um, you know, I, I, I think. You, yeah, you definitely have to secure the bag. You got to take care of your family. I mean, obviously, when any athlete enters the realm of sports, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Clay Thompson, uh, Michael Jordan, whoever, they, their first goal was, I'm trying to get my family out of this situation. I'm trying to set up generational wealth for generations, generations to come long after I'm gone or whatever it may be. I'm trying to, you know, just set that up. That's their initial goal. And, and once they get comfortable in that, the next goal is to – win championships now if they don't win a championship like charles barkley then like gilbert arenas damien and damien little hasn't won one yet these are some greats that haven't won one yet alan iverson never won one um then you know you know when, when they're long retired and you know sports analysts start to say okay this person's the goat this person's not the goat they're going to bring up those rings if you had a ring then okay now we can start putting you in the goat conversation you don't got no rings, then hey, you know, and that was that's why you know KD went to go get him a couple of Golden State because he was like, I'm I'm elite, I'm a dog. They compared me to LeBron, but I don't got no rings, so I need to, you know, that's what he did. That's one reason we did. But uh, me pers me personally, if I was a professional athlete, I would um, be fine just with the money. I'm making 102. If I made 200 million dollars in my whole career being a role player, I'm good. 15 year career, you know, make 100 million dollars. I'm good because I've secured the bag for myself, for my family. I'm good. I'm taking care of things. You know, I can retire my mom or my my, my family, whoever it may be, um, to make sure that they are good to go. And so, um, so it, 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 if and you have to you have to know who you are. If you know if you're a role player, if you're like someone that was a Kyle Corver or somebody that's like a um, uh, Robert Horry. You know what I'm saying? Some of these role, some of these legendary Jamal Crawford, some of these legendary role players over the years, then it's like, yeah, okay, this is my role. I'm not, I'm not gonna be a Jordan or a Curry or a LeBron or a Shaq or a Wilt or a Kareem, but I'm gonna play my role, I'm gonna make my money. You gotta go in the league with that type of expectations, be the best you can at your role, 
and make your money. And then if you get a ring, hey, um, that that's 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 personally how how I would view it. Um, and so you know, money or rings. I mean, you you know, we all need money to live. So yeah, I'm taking the money. And most some athletes who do have those rings, but were only role players, um, only made you know ten million dollars out of a five year career. They got to end up selling their ring to make more money. You know, in a lot of these cases, at the end of the day. So you know, I I think a, a player really has to evaluate and examine themselves and see where can I. How do I best fit in this league on the on the team? Am I gonna be like one of these elite players or am I just gonna be a role player? You know what I'm saying? They have to kind of examine themselves as they develop, you know, you gotta work hard and stuff like that. And then that's when they can they can really prioritize um, you know, money and rings as a balance and it, with with the balance of it, and then um, you know, make their decision from there which one they're gonna be more intentional about pursuing. I mean of course, I want the money. You know what I'm saying? I think we all can agree to that. We're going to want that bag. You know, you can be uh, a role player and still get a ring. You can be one of them guys who don't never touch 100 M's, but you got a ring. And, I mean, the only merit to that is they can call you a champion. But mm-hmm. I feel like when you are in a position like a James Harden, where you've done all these great things in your career, it's like that last thing to solidify your career because he's gotten the big checks. He's gotten – we've seen James get these checks. Mm-hmm. But it's like you you almost get there and you just can't get over that hump. That's like a big asterisk by your career. I think a few guys uh, – well, it's a handful of guys who, who've been able to not win rings and still be the man, like Allen Iversons and stuff like that. But I feel like uh, – it would be nice to see James get one, man. Mm-hmm. But yep. it doesn't matter in the long run for him because of all the things he's done uh, throughout his career. But it just sucks, man, when people look at you like a flop in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like some of these guys want to prove it to the world, not just themselves. They done got their money. And I feel like, you know, some, some guys just want to finish their career off with a bang. Tracy McGrady almost got one with San Antonio. We saw what happened with that. But mm-hmm. now, years later, even T Max, like, hey, even if I would have won that ring, you know, it wouldn't have meant too much to me because I wasn't the, the main guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't win it in my prime. I didn't win it with those Rockets teams where mm-hmm. he felt like he deserved to get a ring. He just kept getting injured. So, mm-hmm. uh, of course, man, it's money over everything. Uh, but I feel like some of these guys, you know, but you got guys like uh, Steven Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. And and and, uh, and Jack be talking about how you know you guys who, who say that rings don't matter. You know, you just you know y'all. I can tell y'all some real losers. Y'all ain't y'all ain't used to winning. Mm-hmm. Y'all you know y'all not y'all ain't got it in y'all heart like that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, he's got a ring for sure. Mm-hmm. He's got a ring. You know what I'm saying? He's a champion, but he never touched James Harden's money. Mm-hmm. He's never got those big major contracts. He's never really ever been the number one guy uh, on a team throughout his career. He's always been the number two or the role player. And especially in San Antonio, he was not the number one guy. So, you know, wasn't even the two or the three. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, he was a he was like a, a, a nice role player in that San Antonio Spurs uh, offense. But, um, you know, some guys, they get those rings, man, and they can ride that wave for the rest of their, their life, that I was a champion and go and speak on it and all that. But at the end of the day, man, money is all go around. So mm-hmm. I'd rather have the money, man. Well, man, Mel, just to close this out, yeah, I want the ring. Of course I, I want the ring. Yes, I'd rather have, like, Trust me, Michael Jordan wouldn't be Michael Jordan who he is today. It ain't no consider. And that's what I meant to correct you on, too, Jack. Ain't no consider to go. He is the GOAT. I don't even know why it's even a discussion. But you know, people saying LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. Hey, hey, that, I don't pretty, know. And, and I'm still trying to figure out when he passed Kobe. 
<laughs> and, and, and a lot of stuff that I see, man, is just just because you play a long time. If you play, if he plays thirty more years, guess what? He's gonna own a whole bunch of more records. That's mm-hmm. usually what happens when you play a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. Doesn't mean you're yeah. a better player. I can guarantee you. I'll put it like this: Frank Gore is the third. Uh, all he's third on the list of all-time leading records. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of guys that's behind him. What do y'all got something going on? No, we're good. Y'all don't hear that noise? It was a it was a door in my um uh, someone had used restroom in my house. Oh yeah. but yeah, my fault. <clears throat> but uh the all time um he's third all time on the um rushing list. You gonna tell me he's better than um uh Walter Payton? You gonna tell me he's better than Fred Taylor? <laughs> you gonna tell me he's better than Edwin James? You gonna tell me he's better than Ladanian Thompson? Or Bo Jackson? Bo, and Bo Jackson ain't even playing the lead that long, but I, I love Frank Gore, but that doesn't mean anything just because you're up there, but I don't know, man. I ain't trying to get all too much on that, but yes, I would love to win a ring, and I'm going to try my damage to get one because, of course, I can be like, yeah, I'm a champion, but I'm going to tell you right now, if I don't get it, I ain't. I, of course, I that that's like a knock that uh, Shaq can do with uh, Charles, but guess what? Charles Barkley ain't hurting for nothing, <laughs> for nothing. Like I said, if Charles had to switch careers, with uh, had a choice to switch his career for Kenny to Jet Smith, he wouldn't do it. Just to say he had rings, man. Please, I'm Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. Like, I'm not even about to do this, man. So, kids, if you don't learn anything from this podcast, learn this. Secure the bag and protect it at all costs. But before I get to this one, I wanted to show you gentlemen this video. And I really want to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. Because you know why? Because once you do, whenever something goes down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, that's I've had that's that. why. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, I'm going to uh, play that one more time just so y'all can get. Like, hear everything that he's saying, little 14 minute clip. Oh, I said 14 minute, 14 second clip. And just tell me what y'all think. And then we go, well, we're going to go into it. And then open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. Because you know why? Because once you do, whenever something goes down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, that's, I've had that's that. why. Real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and the thing that I have with that man, talking with when it comes to this subject, dog. Uh, Josh, you married too, right? Uh, recently engaged. Oh well, you you re, well you getting up there? <laughs> well, you technically there, almost at the uh, thing. But me and the Haven married. In a lot of ways. I put it like this. Do you tell your wife everything? <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a no. But in a lot of ways, I would say this, man. When uh, me and my wife first started talking, in a lot of ways, I was open, but I wasn't too open. I knew things that I wanted to say. Mm. And uh, it's certain things I keep close to the vest for the most part because I know I just seen so much where I have somebody you just fully trust and you can just tell them any, anything, man. And just your deepest, darkest secrets, uh, some trauma from your childhood or anything. And you would think that this person would keep it to 
to themselves or whatnot. If, and the only time we really it, talk about it, unless it's among ourselves. But you get into an argument with somebody and they'll throw it back in your face. It, it, it's never happened to me or whatnot. I'm not saying that, that she uh, done something like that. But I'm just saying, I just seen it happen with other people. And that's why a lot of guys don't really open up. And I think everybody will agree on that because it's it's dangerous to like to fully trust somebody that much. <laughs> and I think we all can agree with that, man. It's it's really really scary, man. That's why we like confining our like our homeboys. They know like a lot of that stuff. Cause I'm like, it's certain people I'm not friends with anymore. But I remember them telling me some stuff that like nobody. Not even my closest of closest friends will ever know about that, because at one once upon a time, them people were my friends. So, I didn't want to uh, ask you guys thoughts on that. That's all. I mean, like, man, you... look, a woman will bait you in for some information <laughs> that she knows she's gonna kill you with later. You know what I'm saying? They will sit up here and they will tell you it's fine, it's cool, just keep it real with me, all these things like that, bro. Just so they can strike you later in the worst way. So uh for all my guys out there, man, be very, very, very selective on what you tell anybody, not just your woman. This is anybody. You gotta be selective, man, because uh <laughs> it's like a police officer, man, which you say can and will be used against you in the court of law so just like with your woman man you gotta look at the same way that's the police officer that's waiting to use what you got what you said later on against you <laughs> when it when it all falls down so you know you just gotta know man like women women and men both say hurtful things to each other um when they have certain ammo you know what I'm saying? Now you you want to fill that gun up if you want, but I'm gonna blast you up uh, later. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then feel free. You know, like you know, I had a partner who was just like, man, you know, tell these women everything, man. Just you know, just keep it real with them from the jump. And it's like, nah, man. Just realistically, dude, when you're starting to talk to somebody, you can't do that. You know, it's not the smart thing to do to just give them all of everything that you got, all of you. You got to keep certain things um, to yourself to protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, man, you know, you can't tell it. You know, that's just with anybody out here. You just going to meet a stranger in the streets and then tell them who your mama, your daddy is, where they live, all this stuff like that. I mean, nah, man, they can they can come back and find out where you at and hurt you and take you out the game. You know, if they can't get to you, they're going to get to whoever's closest to you. And the same thing with these women. Uh, they they won't be able to physically hurt you, but they will be able – well, some of them can. But they won't be able to physically hurt you most of the time, but they will emotionally wreck you by the things that you've allowed them to know about yourself and the things that you hold so dear and tight and near to yourself. So I totally understand what Shaq was saying in that realm. Uh, but yeah, man, hey, keep keep what's, what's closest to you, what's, what you care about the most. A lot of times you're going to have to bottle it up, keep it to yourself. Or like we were talking about, you got your homies you can talk to, your real ones, your real ones. You should know by now who your real friends are and who ain't your real friend. There's some people who displayed some funny things over time with you to where you can kind of gauge, yeah, I don't think I can just trust this guy with everything. You trust him with some things, but I can't trust him with everything. And and every you know, time reveals. So time will reveal who your real friends are and who who you can entrust with certain things. And then, uh, you know, you got some backstabbers out there, man. You got a lot of backstabbers, and you got to watch out. And if you even got a a, a, a tiny little <laughs> thought in your mind, this person ain't right. You don't need to be entrusting in them with all your all your most precious thoughts and, and, and treasures. So mm -hmm. that's what I got to say on that one. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, man, I, I want to say you hit it all. <laughs> you hit it, the nail 
Well, whatever the saying is, but yeah, you hit it right on the head right there, man, for real. Because in a lot of ways, like uh of course with a lot of us, if folks that don't know us personally, me and the Haven uh close friends or whatnot, been in both both weddings. He was my groomsman, I was his groomsman mm-hmm. or whatnot. We tight our daughters right there in the same age group. Well, they both just toddlers, so but yeah, we just tight like that. And we we had conversations like this, stuff that he told me I would never tell. No what now, it's only like certain people that know, but he know what I'm talking about. It's just like certain things that uh only me, him, and another person would um uh, talk about. So yeah, man, keep your friends like you know who your partners is, dog. You just just know who your people is and whatnot, but the uh when it comes to uh, women, man, I just don't it's just hard for a man to just fully open up to a woman like that. You have to. I don't know, man. Josh, you spoke on it? Nah, uh oh, go ahead. Yeah. My fault. No, yeah. you good, man. <laughs> you good, yeah. So I definitely um, see where Shaq is coming from. Uh, I definitely agree with him. Like I said, I recently engaged, uh, you know, been my uh, fiance for uh, two and a half years. Um, And so, uh, you know, I definitely, and then she has three other sisters um, and and, um, as well. And so, uh, you know, just being around them um, and, and, you know, just my mom and just all those things. It's like, yeah, I definitely, I definitely see where Shaq's come, come, coming from because women do gossip. Um, and, you know, that that's one aspect of it as far as why you should not tell them certain things because it could end up being something that's brought up, not in just a confrontation or disagreement that you all may have, but in them talking to their girlfriends um, that could come up, um, some private matter that you opened up them to, and then that can become a whole issue. And so it's like you really have to be careful of what you say, um, you know, um, you know, either married or engaged, whatever it may be, because that that that's the those are the consequences that could result in just opening up. And it's hard, you know, you go through something, you or something tragic occurs, something traumatic occurs, you want to vent, but you have to know who to vent to, um, and so that these private things are kept private and confidential. Uh, so, um, you know, it is, and, and especially the, someone of Shaq's rank, he's a celebrity, celebrity, retired athlete. I mean, his stuff can leak out there in the Twitter world, you know, one of his baby mamas or ex can say something that, you know, she, that he didn't want to expose. And then that could come back on him, expose him. And now he could find himself in trouble with somebody or, you know, you know, have to dish out some money to somebody or whatever it may be. So, um, so yeah, man, I, I just, I hate it's like that, but it's the world we live in, especially as social media is now. It has really opened things up even more to where privacy is not even as uh, common as it used to be. Um, and so you really just have to, you have to watch what you say on social media. I mean, you have to watch what you say on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, because like DJ said, what you, um, say it can and will be used against you, like policemen say, you know, when, you, when someone is arrested. And so, um, so I mean, like, like, like Brinsky said, man, I just encourage everyone listening and just be careful, especially my men, be careful what you say in general, but um, especially when it comes to women. Yeah, man. So, it, and I know. I don't know how a lot of women would take it or what not, but I will put it like this and then we'll move on to the final topic. Mostly every dude I know and and probably if I had to put a percentage on it and I'm not even playing 99.9% of the men that I know well, more than likely wouldn't tell uh, they woman everything because of that one fear. It may just 
be thrown back in your face doing an argument, trying to win an argument or something like that. Just try to hurt somebody. It's just in a lot of women's nature. Whether folks want to believe it or not, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. But yeah, she can just feel like the sweetest person in the world. And then that's why I say this. Watch what you say to a man, especially if he told you something deep like that. And it's just an argument and you throw something like some trauma that happened to him as a kid. He'll, you, you, he'll never open up to you again. He'll never do it again. You you pretty much lost him. So I say be mindful of what you say. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, final topic of the night. Some some light, because that was a little real. I don't like the end on serious, uh some serious like that. But uh, top five. Uh, NCAA football players we want to see on the cover of this year's game. Who we want to see on the cover. And ladies and gentlemen, look who we got here. Oh, look who want to he want to come on the last uh, subject, but ladies and gentlemen, I will say he it was a little miscommunication on the time or whatnot. So he's supposed to have been on the uh, show earlier, but I will blame myself because I was supposed to uh, tell him a different time. Supposed to, don't worry about that, but he know what I'm talking about. Final, I don't know. I'm going to let you uh, get yours off real quick. Quint, I don't know. You can hear me? Okay, I don't know what he's doing. I'm just going to put him on mute. Let me know when you can uh, hear yourself. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up, anything? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what he's doing. Can you hear us? Nah, I can't hear y'all. You can't hear us. We can hear you. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave. We can come hear back. you. All right. All right, I'm gonna leave and come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. man. I, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm gonna uh, show on the video one more time or whatnot. But who you guys want to see on the cover? I. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll go real up. quick. Um, I got it, it's possible. Oh, I don't, but they the fun part about it they they can put somebody that's already playing college football right now. It ain't got to be necessarily somebody going to the uh league. Quint, it's okay, man. It's all right, man. He can't hear us. Yeah. Yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, it ain't necessarily got to be nobody that's all. It ain't got to be necessarily nobody's going to the NFL right now. So uh, I say it can be Caleb Williams, Shador, um, Jaden Daniels. Uh, these literally all my guys that I think that can make it. Uh, but I think. Out of respect for the game, I think it should be uh Nick Saban on there. Just out of respect for the uh game. I know Josh doesn't like that because he's a Georgia fan, but it's just out of respect, man. It ain't even nothing like that because just how big the news was. This is how you know Nick Saban is the GOAT. Once the man retired and folks are celebrating, that's how you know you're the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, right. Because- I was one of those people. <laughs> He was like, yes, we got a chance. We got a chance. Auburn rolling up toilet paper on them uh, dirty trees. Mm-hmm. Like they got a chance. Not. But, hey. Yeah. I mean, you never know. You know. Hold on. Hold on. Quinn, can you hear now? 
Yeah, I hear. I'm good now. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. Like I said, man, you made it to the final uh, topic or whatnot. But real, real quick before we go back to dick. Um, yeah, no, no. We'll just stay right here and just end it right here. But um, who the uh, top five people you want to see on the uh, cover of NCAA this year? Mm. It can be anybody. It can be coaches. It can be players. It can be former players. It can be whoever. Mm, top five. Jalen Miller. <laughs> nah, uh, Jaden Daniels. I even put Queen Years on them. Uh, I ain't putting. I ain't buying no Queen Years. I don't care. <laughs> I ain't buy. I buy Ben John when I ain't buying no Queen Years. My uh, Penix and um. Um, I put uh Harbor coach. I thought about I that. I ain't putting no, ain't no coach ahead of Nick say So I, I don't care, but that's your list. So I gotta respect. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, if it's me, of course I want to see my UT guy. You was on the cover. That'd be one. Penix. That'd be real dope to see Penix on the cover. Shador. Uh, I like Caleb, man. Golly, dude. Just the way he, he finished out, he fizzled. But Caleb would be cool to see on the cover. And uh, you wanna like I, 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 I say, I say Saban, bro, just because of what he brought to the game. They had Madden on the 25, I mean, on the uh, what was it, 23? Madden was on the 23 cover, yeah. right? Last yeah. year, yeah. yeah. If they pull a Nick Saban move like that, Nick Saban S move with that, that would be pretty cool to see. But uh, yeah, those are those are my five guys, man. If I could see them, you know, grace the cover, or hey, even Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, that's, man, that's balled out. That'd be dope to see him on there too. Yeah, yeah, man. So I think uh, Nick Saban, heck no, fuck that. I'm joking. Hey, no, bump no, crap no. I ain't gonna cuss. Anyway, real people, not so bad. But uh, Brock Bowers, um, definitely UGA guy. Go dogs. Uh, Shador Sanders, I think that would really be cool. Black quarterback. Uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, Michael Penix Jr. And um, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. Like DJ said. Yeah, man, that's everybody got a nice little list. Man, just I know we already talked about it, but since Quint came in, I'm gonna let you uh see this video real quick, just 14 seconds, and just give your uh input and we up out of here. Okay. Open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. Because you know why? Because once you do. Whenever something go down, they're gonna throw it back in your face. Well, that's I've had that's that. why. Real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you crack as your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shout out to uh, my mid stage too for the uh, and uh, shacking them podcast for uh, having that video too. Hey, I know we already passed it, but honorable mention, I would put Travis Hunter on the cover too. Right. I like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what's your thoughts on him? Man, to be honest with you, he he just giving his advice on his experience. He's been <laughs> to be honest with you, he's been married once. Um cheating, kept cheating. And no, no, what well, 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 I'm not talking about his experience. No, no, I, I see yeah. I explained to him about the video. You just what do you, what? Like, what is your uh imp- what is your um take on men telling uh women everything? Will you tell your woman everything? I mean, if if that's my person, my person who I'm gonna be with forever, yeah, I'm gonna tell her everything. And she'll tell me everything, you know. Now certain stuff I ain't gonna lie, like 
That's not everything, though. <laughs> See I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. You can tell them everything to a certain extent. So when it comes to situations where it's like, like, you know, you just walking well, down, the, you walking down the street and a girl trying to hop down on you or something like that. I mean, you turn them down. I, I ain't going to tell my girl that because she, she know that. Just like I know she's attractive, she knows I'm attractive. So people gonna people gonna try to talk. You know, all you gotta do is turn them down equally. I'm not I'm not gonna be like, hey babe, this girl tried to talk to me today. Uh man, this girl, this girl over here tried to talk to me today. This girl over here tried to talk to me. I'm not gonna do all that because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to my girl, I'm going home. So I tell I'll tell her everything to a certain extent. That's what I mean. And see, gentlemen, that right there told me everything I need to know. Pretty much, well, we all pretty much said no. We're not telling everything. It doesn't matter because we don't. We know women will come right back up for the most part. That's why I was laughing. I was like, "You sure you're gonna tell your woman everything?" I'm like, <laughs> yes, "I'm like, man, you ain't about to cap to me right now." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm not going for it." But yeah, man. Uh, Shout out to Arlon, couldn't make it tonight or whatnot. He working late or whatnot, getting this million dollar deal done for the podcast. You got to speak these things into existence or whatnot. But I do want to say, I do want to say one thing though. Go ahead. Uh, when y'all boys come visit, man, my company has a suite in, in the Denver Naked Stadium. So y'all are all invited. All right. Man, hey, don't tell me that. I try to come out there sooner. You tell you get, <laughs> matter of fact, especially, matter of fact, we'll talk about that offline. Folks don't need no idea. But but my man was in the skybox last night, ladies and gentlemen, for the uh Bucks and Nuggets game. And that boy was having the time in his life, had him a cold one. Know that. Yeah. You already know I did, man. But one thing I can't say, man, watching Giannis on TV is a lot different than watching him in person, bro. That man is – he's dominant, bro. Yeah. That's usually how it is when you go see somebody. Yeah. In per- like, bro, I personally seen Kobe play twice in my lifetime. And each time I was just like, bro. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Look, my goodness, man. It's just, <laughs> it's just like, bro, an experience, dog. But – uh. Everybody just shout out they uh uh Instagram and all that good stuff and we're gonna head up out of here. Guys start we'll start with uh Jack. Yeah. Uh Instagram, uh Joshua Dennis. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much it. You're gonna see a lot of a lot of sports stuff on there, some music stuff and things of that nature. So Joshua Dennis. Go ahead, Quinn. All right, man. I, I want to give my apologies for being late. Uh, it's not on you, man. Up, it's not on you. Made it. Listen, uh, all I want to say, IG is QG underscore sophisticated, as you see. Um, that's on all social media platforms. So follow your boy. It's your boy, man. You already know. Follow me at all the major social media platforms that DJ Ghost play, though. You know what I'm saying? It's another one in the books, man. We do this. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I am Brinsky Sharp, host of the Sharp Shooters podcast. We drop every Wednesday. We on the road to 400 subscribers. Appreciate all the love and support. We're growing each and every day. We're very, very close to that 500 mark, but we, we try to take it one step at a time to get to that 400 mark, and then we'll focus on 500. So, Currently, I think is 361, so that's 39 more subscribers. We need 39 more subscribers to the channel, and we will hit 400, and it's only going to keep growing. Um, We're going to hit all milestones, get partnerships and all that good stuff. Merch going to come sometime this year, and it ain't talking about no cheap merch. We talking about some legit stuff. A t-shirt that you put in the washer that you can watch 50 times and it's still like it's brand new. I'm talking about that type of quality. But 
Appreciate everybody. And also, once again, shout out to Arlon. He couldn't make it tonight. But Super Bowl week next week. Appreciate everybody. And you already know how we always end. Shout out to Tuskegee, Alabama. And roll damn tide.